What's up everyone, Michael here with another vlog. Today I want to talk about the PC release. The PC release being the ultimate edition of literally any game ever. Which, that's not 100% true. Croc Legend of Gobos exists. But, regardless, modern day PC releases are actually pretty dang great. And I kind of want to talk about why they're great in a non-technical sense. I, I'm going to be doing a design view video on why PC is the ultimate platform to release a video game on. But, I kind of want to talk about the PC release just as a sort of, you know... A, Something personally that I always look forward to and something that I think literally anybody should be looking towards because consoles are not going to last forever. And I feel like the console market should already be sort of out of it because I feel like consoles just don't really offer the same, I guess, flexibility as a PC. And it doesn't really make sense to buy a console to buy games anymore because basically you have PCs that can run thousands and thousands of games, not only new releases, and they're not going to be gouged for them, but you can also play old releases, abandonware, free games and stuff. It's just there's so much available on the market for the PC that it just makes no sense. But I want to talk about why the PC release is always the best release, because while it's, you know, somewhat researched and stuff like that, it is also personal preference. You know, if you have a console and you're like, oh, I want to play in my living room and you're just not smart enough to use a PC, then, well, there you go. Sure, whatever. You can have your own opinion. But I'm going to talk about the PC release and why I like it. So yeah, basically, I want to talk about how they've been doing a lot of enhanced editions and re-releases and remakes and stuff because this is kind of related to that because recently we've been seeing a lot of PC releases of a lot of older games and some fairly decent ports as well. Bayonet is a fairly good port, although when I just tried to record, I just ran into a borderless window bug to where the game randomly loses focus, which is a little bit frustrating. That's a little bit um, unfortunate, but that actually has to do with windows and stuff like that. I can talk about that another time if people actually care. But yeah, for the most part, you know, most of these ports have been fairly decent or at least playable or at least, you know, comparable to their God damn it. I died at least comparable to their console counterparts. And that's what's most important is the fact that all these PC releases have become the definitive version of these games, even games that are super, super old where like, let's say, for example, Final Fantasy 12 just came out on PC. Finally, and they're like, hey, you know, enhanced edition. It's here. I didn't even know it was going to release. It just came up on Steam. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then I just bought it immediately. And uh, I do have an overview for that if you're wondering on the PC port and stuff like that. I probably won't do a review because of how old it is, but there you go. But yeah, ultimately, you know, that became the definitive version of the game because it supported 60 FPS, which is just... In my opinion, if your game doesn't run at 60 FPS, it's not worth playing. And there's multiple reasons for that. One, playing a game at 30 FPS actually gives me migraines and it actually affects my eyes. And so I have to play a game at 60 FPS or else it actually causes me to get sick, which is not something that's, you know, it's not an opinion. It is literally a fact. And also it just feels incredibly smooth to play a game at 60 FPS. It's even better to play higher than that. But of course, I'm going to prefer 60 FPS or higher. You know, if you can actually get higher than that, it's obviously perfect. But there's a lot of people that are going back to Final Fantasy 12 just to play the game at 60 FPS and actually look at it. There we go. I kicked your butt this time. Yeah, take that woman. I forgot your name of because I haven't played through this game for a very long time. I said when I when this released on PC that I was going to end up going back and playing it because, you know, once again, full 60 FPS game is incredibly smooth to play. It does have a little hitches here and there, but... You know, it's just a fantastic looking game. But when you end up releasing on PC, the PC has so many advantages that consoles just do not have. One, you have infinitely scalable resolutions and there's resolution hacks for really, really old games. And they end up being, you know, once again, the definitive version because, hey, playing at a higher resolution, even if you don't get increased frame rates, being able to see the game more clearly makes it more enjoyable in so many situations. And there's certain games where that doesn't necessarily matter, such as pixelation games. But at the same time, you also have GPU um, fuck, what was it called? Um, it's, it's like GPU, um, scaling. Uh, frick, I, I just had the technical, like, name in my mind. But yeah, basically GPU scaling to where basically it's going to make it so they'll, like, use the GPU for scaling instead of your monitor. And you don't have, you know, a console's whatever. So it's going to end up depending on which GPU you have. But you can actually make pixel-lighted games look absolutely gorgeous. There was the, uh, PC release of this Gaia, which came out and actually had, uh, character filtering or whatever, that you could enable. It was optional. I have it off because I don't really like it um, because my monitor is very crisp and clear, and so I wanted those pixels to be crisp and clear. But they had a bilinear, or not a bilinear, but... um, Frick. No, it is bilinear. Yeah, it is bilinear filtering. Yeah, they had a bilinear filtering option, which basically made the sprites kind of look a little bit um, paste. And so I was like, eh, I don't know if I necessarily like this. And 
Then I found out you can actually enable that sort of scaling on the GTX 1070. And so I tried it. I'm like, wow, this looks a thousand times better than that before. And so, you know, once again, PC is able to go through there. And you also have modding and hacking. And people hear hacking and they they get the wrong idea. People think hacking is always bad. Um, no, I'm talking about, oh, it's one of these. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Hold on. I'm going to grab this because I want it. Mine. Um... But yeah, people hear hacking and they think really, really bad things. But no, hacking as in, like, fixing games through hacks. Oh, I was supposed to go over there. Whoops, ouch, I'm just gonna get lightning bolted. But hacks to, like, fix resolution, for example. I do a lot of resolution hacks, which is something that I actually did for Fantasy Star Universe. It's something I did for um, Sonic Heroes as well, which somebody else actually had or already had a tutorial for that, so I didn't actually have to do it on my own, but somebody else actually um, made one, and then I just kind of, like, copied their method. But yeah, you're able to like increase resolution on games that never was intended to. Like widescreen hacks make it so that four by three games run in um, 16 by nine or 16 by 10 or whatever. And you can do a lot of interesting stuff. And let's say there's a game that's not working. Like let's say um, Beyond Good and Evil or whatever, which is an absolutely fantastic game. There are certain versions of the game that just do not work, such as if you have it on Uplay, good luck getting it to run on a modern machine because it requires an old frigging video card to run. However, GOG's version actually had a patch, which is used by a hex edit, that actually enables the game to be played on modern hardware by removing those restrictions and actually enhancing the effects of the game, which is super, super awesome. You also just have the availability to actually increase your playability by making it so that you can use any sort of input that you would possibly want. For example, I'm playing this game with an Xbox One controller. If I wanted to go back and try to play this again on the Xbox 360, I would have to use the 360 controller, which I mean, as I actually like the 360 controller, and so that's not that big of a deal. But when it goes into things like, let's say, an NES, I hate the NES controller. I think it's absolutely awful. And so if I can play any of those, such as through emulation, for example, which isn't technically a PC release, but I'm going to count it for this argument right here. Um, actually, what's another any PlayStation exclusive game, any game that released exclusively on PlayStation? I'll use that as an example, because basically I do not like the PlayStation controller. I think it's too small and it hurts my hands to use it. And I'm definitely trying to use like the uh, left and right stick combined is just it kills my hands whatsoever. And so I'm able to be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to play this with an Xbox controller, and so I do, and it just feels absolutely amazing. And people have played through games like Dark Souls with a freaking Guitar Hero guitar, because it's the PC. You can do whatever you want. And that's the main thing about it, is that the PC releases kind of the ultimate edition because you're just able to do whatever you want. It just has the most flexibility of any of the consoles out there because it's not a console. It is a device, and you're just making games that end up working on this device. Can I torture this guy yet? Oh, no, he's going to run away from me. All right, be a jerk, then I'll murder all your friends. I wanted to torture attack him, but that's fine. I'll save. Oh, no, nope, I'm going to use it on this big guy because I could kill. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. Dang it. But yeah, and just another thing as well. This is one thing that people over always look about PC is monitors. Monitors are freaking fantastic. Now, technically, you can use a monitor as a PC in some cases, but for the most part, you know, you're stuck to a TV. But people don't realize that TVs are not necessarily made to be clear. There are certain restrictions to, P or to monitors, or not monitors, but t televisions that are not in monitors. And so you'll actually go through and look at the same image on a good monitor, and it's like, this looks so clear in comparison. I was actually staying at my mother's for a while, um, and basically, I showed um, her significant other an image on my monitor and he's like whoa this looks super clear and he looked at it on the tv and he's like hmm <laughs> and he had to question his tv purchases for a little while because it's just you can get such high quality monitors in comparison and that's another thing as well like you're not stuck on you know anything that the console could hook up to you can have any sort of hookups that you want it's just a download it is software instead of being like this toy that you end up plugging into a system it is a piece of software and you can do whatever you want with that software whether you want to you know make the game look better or worse or whatever the hell you want to do with your inputs you can just go ahead and do whatever you want and developers have complete freedom over that and with the growth of consoles you know kind of dying and pcs kind of getting more popular we're running into a situation to where now engines are just like no nah, everything will port to pc is super easy and microsoft has jumped on this boat super easy and we've actually been seeing them push out some decent ports as well which is actually super super awesome and so yeah i just think the pc edition is the best edition of pretty much any game out there as long as it's after 1994 ish i would say i think before 1994 they kind of 
dropped the ball a little bit here and there. And maybe some other ones here and there, like I mentioned, or maybe I did mention, I don't remember 100%, but there was um, Croc the Legend of Gobos. Um, for some reason, the PC edition didn't have music because the devs didn't know how to make it with music, basically. It required a sound card to get the music, but then they couldn't include it on the disc, and so they had to get a new disc. But the PlayStation edition was compressed so much, however, that all the textures had to be compressed down. They're like, oh, hey, we can fit the music in. So we'll just add the music to the PlayStation version, which is a hilarious little thing. That's mostly because of the developers, though. But as long as a game actually tries to be a good game on PC, it'll be the definitive edition of the game. And so I look forward to seeing all these new PC releases coming out because I'm super excited for it. And I'm actually playing through Final Fantasy XII right now. It has problems capturing, which is why I'm not playing in the background right now. I'm playing Bayonetta instead. And Bayonetta is a good kind of game to play anyways because it's just a fantastic action game i love this game to death it's one of my favorite games of all time it's absolutely fantastic oh i can grab him oh no i got hit instead i'm just playing terribly though because i'm trying to play in the background i just kept spinning him forever because you get extra halos yeah you're picking up halos not rings yes it was published by sega and i thought it was a connection to rings of the second but no they explained it as halos which makes sense because you're killing angels but i still think they made halos a drop because it was sega and they have sonic i think that's hilarious but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like my content, you can also help out on Patreon. Even a dollar a month ends up helping quite a bit. And make sure to leave your comments on PC releases if you're a PC gamer. If you're not a PC gamer, I feel sorry for you. Um, that is kind of unfortunate. Consoles will die eventually, and then you'll be on PC. But trust me, if you're not a PC gamer already, PC gaming is not as hard as people like to make it think. Because I don't know why, but for some reason, people on consoles are like, PCs are so hard, and... No, I'm sorry, but my little sister is able to play on PCs. It's it's not hard. Oops, I died again. It's not hard to play games on PC. And I'm not talking about the difficulty of the game. Obviously, I just died in Bayonetta, which makes that sound hilarious. But, you know, building a PC is super, super easy. Anybody with a brain can do it. Like, if you want to put in effort, you'll be able to. And then you'll get access to literally millions of games. And some of them are particularly great. But, you know, old classics and stuff like that, you can end up going back. You can go back and play the original Diablo just on a modern PC. You can be like, you know what, I'm gonna go play Diablo and just go play it. That's a thing you can do because PC Master Race. I'm not part of the PC Master Race, really. I'm just, I just play games on PC because I use PC every day and games are just superior on it, which is super, super awesome. So eventually, make sure to subscribe for the eventual episode to where I'll talk about why PC is the ultimate platform to release a video game on. But that'll be coming out. That's more research. That's like design view stuff. And so basically, I'll be talking about how in both the developer front and publisher front and consumer front, why PC is the ultimate platform for video games. But of course, that'll be released in the future. For now, I'm going to stick to this one. And I'm going to kick these guys' butt and get some revenge because now I'm going to actually focus now that I don't have to talk. Yeah.